Well, good evening. Good evening. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of the Lord again this evening, and what a blessing it is to look back through there and see you here tonight. I tell you, I thank God for another opportunity to be back in the house of the Lord. Yes. You know, this week has flew by. Yes, it has. It has, my friend. I mean, it has just went by just, just like that. But I thank the Lord that he's met with us each night. Oh, yes, man. I thank God that there's a few people left that want to hear the word of God. Brother Dean, you don't know how blessed you are as pastor to have a congregation that wants to hear the word of God. Amen, brother. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. 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 What a blessing it is to be yes. in a church where people love the word of God, where the word of God is preached, where it's taught, where it's obeyed, that means a lot. Amen. 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 By no means is this the end of revival. It's just the beginning of That's revival. It. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's just the beginning. Now, revival will be next week, the week after, Amen. the week after, a month from now, yeah. three months from now, six months from now. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's revival. And I tell you what, Miss Jean, I want to thank you for being so faithful each and every night of being so mindful of me and bringing water every single evening. And I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I, amen. I'm glad, thank God, if you got some good water, you'd like to share it, amen. Like the brother, when he was singing, talking about uh, when he was in between his songs, he's talking about salvation, how you want somebody else to have it too. Amen. That's the way it is with good water. Yeah. And we got the living water right here before amen. us, amen. amen. I tell you what, I thank God for the good singing tonight, the choir, and for each one that used their talents to glorify the Lord. I tell you what, I just appreciate that. If I could play a, a stringed instrument, I would, but I can't hardly play the radio. But uh, I tell you what, I'm just so thankful that people are using their talents to glorify the Lord. Well, we'll ask you this evening here if you'd take your Bibles and let's turn to the Old Testament book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 89. Psalm chapter 89. And we'll ask you once you found your place if you'd please stand as we read God's word together. Psalm chapter number 89. Psalm chapter 89, and we'll begin our reading in verse number 1. Psalm chapter 89 and verse number 1. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Selah. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord. Thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord. Who among the sons of mighty can be likened unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are around about, are, that are about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you, Lord, for this week that we've had, Lord, to be here at Mount Carmel Baptist Church. I want to thank you, Lord, for this dear pastor. I want to thank you, Lord, for this precious congregation. And I ask God that your hedge and your hand of protection would be upon them. And I ask God that you'd continue to bless this church and give this church to the, the desires of their heart in your will. Lord, I pray, God, here tonight that you would speak to every heart. 
And Lord, if there be one here that's never been born again, I ask, Lord, you would draw them tonight and that they would receive you before it's everlasting too late. Oh, God, have your way tonight. Meet with us, stir us one more time. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As we read these eight verses of Scripture together, we would like to preach to you just for a few minutes tonight on the fall of God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness. You and I, God has been faithful to us. If we would be honest and say with all of our hearts, God has never failed us. He said that he would never leave us or he would never forsake us. And how true that is. God has never left us. He never will. He will go with us all the way into the end of the world. Amen. God is faithful. He is faithful. Look in verse 1. The psalmist said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. The psalmist here was going to be a witness. He purposed in his heart that he was going to tell other people just how faithful God was. And you and I that saved by the grace of God, we ought to tell others about how faithful God has been to us. God is faithful. And we ought to tell other people that God is faithful. We need to be witnessing for the Lord. The scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And it's about time that we start saying so. And it's about time we start telling other people just how good God has been to us. Because if we don't tell them, who's going to tell them? We need to share with our families and we need to share with those that we work with just how good that the Lord has been. Amen. The psalmist said, I'll make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Look in verse verse 2. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens. In Genesis chapter number 9 and verse number 13. Genesis chapter number 9 and verse number 13. Look at God's faithfulness. Verse number 13, he says, I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that, it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. That is God's faithfulness. God said, I'm going to put a bow in the sky. And here this time of the year, we have a lot of spring storms. And in the summertime, we'll have thunderstorms. And it might be raining in one spot, but not be raining where you are. And when the sun begins to shine through the clouds and that rains are falling down, you'll see the most beautiful rainbow that man can never make. And that rainbow was a symbol of God's faithfulness. God said, I know I will never destroy the earth by water again. So every time that we see the rainbow, Honey, I'm not talking about the rainbow's not a symbol for homosexuals. The rainbow is a symbol. It's a covenant that God made with all living creatures that he would never destroy the earth with water again. That is a symbol and a sign of God's faithfulness. So next time you see that rainbow, look up there and you say, that's exactly what God said. That's a promise from God. Amen. That's a promise from God. Now, I want you to look in verse number five. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord. Was going home last night. 
And I looked up in the sky on the way home. And I saw the moon. How many of you seen the moon shining last night? Did you see it? Oh, wasn't that thing beautiful? Oh, it's just beautiful. And they said that by looking at where the moon was at, you could look up to the right just a little bit. And they said that was the, the planet Jupiter. And the Milky Way. On a good, clear night, you can look up and see the Milky Way. You can see the hundreds and thousands and thousands of stars. And the galaxies, they just continue to go and just continue to go and continue to go. And man is continually uh, discovering just that space just keeps going. I'm telling you, that's just heaven praising God. The stars are shining for the glory of God. The moon is shining. The lesser light is shining for the glory of God. That's God's faithfulness. The stars in the heavens, they, they praise God. They thank Him. And you and I, we ought to thank the Lord. We ought to praise Him. God didn't give His only begotten Son for the moon. He didn't give His Son for the stars. He gave His Son for me. And He gave His Son for you. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank God. And you and I that's redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, we ought to thank the Lord. And we ought to acknowledge His faithfulness just a little bit more than what we do. God is faithful. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse number 23 says, Great is thy faithfulness. Psalm chapter 119 and verse number 90 says, Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 9, God is faithful. Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 and verse number 9, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. That's a promise from God. Did you know what that word sufficient means? That word sufficient means to, to have power to endure any danger. God's grace has been sufficient for you and for me. He has given us the power to endure any danger, any situation that we'll ever encounter, the situations that we've encountered in times past. God's been there the whole way. He's propped us up. He's held us up. He's got us through, and he'll continue to get us through. God is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but, just, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make you a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Listen, church. When that tempter comes... When the devil comes, when the temptation comes, God, now listen to me, God said that he would make a way for you to escape that temptation. Amen. When that temptation arises and that temptation comes and that pressure comes for you to do wrong, God will run that through your mind saying, hey, that's wrong. Hey, you don't need to be doing that. You know what that is? That's God being faithful, making a way for you to escape, or making a way for you to get out, or making a way for you to leave, to flee that evil. Amen. God is faithful. Amen. Did you know what? There's never been a sin committed since Adam that first wasn't pondered about. Amen. So God has made a way. God has made a way to escape the temptations because God is faithful. God, as we talked about last night about Jericho, 
and Joshua. How that God was faithful. God said that the walls would fall flat and the people shall ascend up. And you know what? God was faithful at his word. And we've got an eyewitness right here that's seen it. We've got an eyewitness right here concerning God's faithfulness about what God said in his word. God is faithful, church. He's faithful. And he always will be faithful. God was faithful to Elijah when he told him to go to the wilderness. And when you go to the wilderness, I'm going to send the ravens to feed you there. Now I looked out the window this morning there at the house and looked up on the bank up there and I seen some crows. And them things was up there on the bank and I don't know, there's four or five of them. And I done that on the glass of the window. You know what they done? I thought about if I was slick enough, I'd go get my shotgun and shoot one of them. But I figured as soon as I poked my head around the house, they were gone. But God told Elijah, you go to the wilderness. He said, I'm going to send the ravens to feed you there. Mm-hmm. And what did God do? God was faithful, and God used those ravens to feed Elijah by the brook cherub. Amen. God is faithful. God is faithful. Isaiah chapter number 7 and verse number 14. Isaiah chapter number 7 and verse number 14. God is faithful. God is faithful in sending the Savior. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. God was faithful and sending his only begotten son. God was faithful. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government of his and, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This was prophesied, this was told about 740 years before the birth of Christ. God was faithful to his word. And God will continue to be faithful to his word. And of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And thank God he did. Through Jesus Christ, his son. Isaiah chapter number 53. God was faithful. And God is faithful. 700 years before the birth of Christ. In verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it was our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray, and have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. God was faithful in providing a sacrifice. It should have been me that hung on the cross and paid for my sin. It should have been you that hung on the cross and paid for your sin. But praises be unto his name, God is faithful. God was faithful in sending a sacrifice because my blood wouldn't have done any good and your blood wouldn't have done any good. It took the sinless lamb of God. It took the sinless lamb of God, I said. It took his blood to cleanse us. Amen to cleanse us from all sin. God is faithful in providing the sacrifice. Amen. Jesus said in John 14, 3, he said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Did you know that everything that we've talked about so far tonight, that God has showed his faithfulness? And God will still continue to show his faithfulness. 
Jesus is coming again. The next time, he's not going to touch down on this earth physically. He's going to appear yonder in the clouds of glory and he's going to say, come up hither. And you and I that's saved, that's born again by the grace of God, you and I, we're going to be changed in a moment of a twinkling of an eye. That's a promise of God. Yes, it is. And God is faithful. Did you know that God cannot lie? That's it. Amen. And that is a promise from God that he's coming for all those who have placed their faith and trust in him. Amen. Amen. God's faithful. Did you know that there's nothing else, prophetically speaking, that has to take place for that call to come from glory? Nothing. 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 You know when it can happen? Two seconds from now. Two minutes from now. Two hours from now. We might not see another sunrise. We might, next thing we know, brother, we might be in glory altogether. God's faithfulness. God is faithful. God is faithful. He told the disciples, he said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, I'll build my church. His church is going all the way through. His church is going to stand against sin. His church is going to do what's right. His church is going to honor him. His church is going to obey him. His church is going to follow him. His church will believe his word. His church will obey his word. Amen. I'm telling you, God is faithful. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. I'm telling you, he set a church aside. He set some people aside that's not going to turn to the right, that's not going to turn to the left, that's going to be faithful all the way to the end. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad, thank God, brother, I'm in the church of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. I tell you, if you're saved tonight, you ought to be saying, hallelujah, I'm saved, I'm in the church, amen. Amen. Oh, thank God. Listen, this revival ain't ending. It's just starting. It's just starting. You could have all kind of invitations from this organization and that organization and this diplomat and that one and even the president himself. That don't mean a thing to me. It don't mean a thing to me. But when God, but when God, the creator, spoke to your heart and said, come to me. You come to me, I'll save you. I'll forgive you. You know what? That was a direct invitation from God Almighty himself. And we've heard from God. Amen. And since we received him as our Savior, we're in the church. The church ain't going down. The church is going up. Amen. Amen. Oh, be encouraged, church. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. God is faithful. God is faithful. Man is not faithful. But God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. Thank God. Thank God he's faithful in saving souls. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That was his sole purpose of coming. He didn't come to have these big cathedrals built, these big buildings, all these schools and all that stuff. He didn't come for all that. He come to save men. I was reminded this week, Brother Dean, 
that Jesus didn't come to destroy men's lives. He come to save men's lives. Amen. He come to save. He come to save. And he's faithful in saving. Well, preacher, how do you know? Because he saved me. That November 9, 1992, I made my way to an old-fashioned altar up on Elk Creek. And I fell down on my knees and I asked God to save me. I thought I was going to die. And I knew I was going to hell. I was gripping that pew so tight and I knew that if I turned God down that night, that was it. I was done. I'd have crossed God's deadline. Preacher, give the invitation. I let go of that pew. I made my way to that old-fashioned altar and fell on my face and said, Lord, God, save me. Oh, God, forgive me of my sins. Save me. You know what he done? He was faithful. He did exactly what he said he would do. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And that's exactly what he done. I'm telling you, he's still faithful. He's the Lord and he changes not. He's saved then. He'll save tonight. Amen. He'll save. He'll save. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't have to get good enough. You don't have to have on the best clothes, the best suits, the best shoes. You don't need none of that. All you need to do is just bring your sin to Jesus and say, Lord, would you forgive me? Lord, would you say, you know what he'll do? He'll forgive you. He'll save you. Amen. Amen. He's faithful in salvation. Yes, he is. He's faithful. He'll save. I'm glad that he's faithful in forgiving sin. I'm talking about after you've been saved. Amen. As I look back through that, I don't see no halos. And you sure don't see one here. 1 John 1, 9 said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all A-L-L unrighteousness. Amen. That's why we need to ask God to forgive us on a daily basis. Because we sin every day. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that to give you a license to go cuss somebody out. I'm saying that to let you know, to inform you that he's faithful in forgiving us if we'll confess it to him. Well, but some of us are just on our high horse and we think we're just so good that we don't sin. And we think we're just so good that we don't never wrong nobody. Everybody else is wrong but me. It's everybody else's fault but me. They'll blame everybody else and never acknowledge that they're the one that's wrong. They'll go to the, they'll go to the grave denying that they ever done anything wrong. I'm talking about people in the house of God. Amen. Got a chip on their shoulder. And strut around and think they're all this and that. If it come a downpour, they'd drown. Yeah. Amen. And God help you, preacher, if you're the one to knock that off. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Well, who do you think you are? Oh, yeah. I heard that not too long ago. Yeah, Man said, Who do you think you are telling me I need to repent? If we confess our sin, he's what? Faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Paul says, let a man examine himself. When you look in the mirror, you need to say, Lord, examine this. Amen. God, listen. God is faithful. God is faithful. Brother, if I've wronged somebody and the Lord reveals it to me or somebody comes up to me and says, you've hurt me, preacher, I don't have a problem getting on my knees and say, will you forgive me? Yes. 
I don't have a problem in doing that. And if you've offended somebody, why don't you just go ahead and say, would you forgive me? Amen. Even though you might have not have done anything wrong. That's it. Amen. Right, you go right ahead and do it for the sake of fellowship, for Christian right. fellowship. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I had one time that brother one told me, said, which I never even knew I offended him. He called me on the phone and told me, said, I demand that you apologize to me before the whole church. Oh, I'm telling you what this old bald head, I'm telling you, son, the top of that thing turned five shades of red. You ask my wife. I thought about it for a little while. Well, I said, what's he going to do? I said, I'm going to apologize to him in front of the whole church. And that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. And still yet today, amen, but Listen, sometimes, sometimes we have to be the lesser. Amen. But no, most of the time we blow up and say, bless God, I ain't apologizing to that. God is faithful. God is faithful. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says, Faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. He's not calling in vain. Listen, if the sweet Holy Ghost of God is speaking to your heart and drawing you tonight, he's calling you to be saved because he wants to forgive you of your sin and he wants to save you. If he's calling you, if he's drawing you, he's drawing you for a reason because he wants to save you. Yes. He wants to forgive you. That's it. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God don't want anybody to die and go to hell. That's why Jesus went to the cross and said, I love you this much to keep you out of hell. That's it. Yes. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to live for him. I'm telling you, the best life is the Christian life. I've been on both sides of the track. I've been in darkness, in deep darkness. And I know right now, like I said, the Christian life is the best life. Amen. Amen. If he's calling you, he'll save you. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 23. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 23. <clears throat> Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. You don't have to be wishy-washy. You don't have to give up your convictions to please somebody. We need to be God pleasers instead of man pleasers. Amen. If man despises you, man wants nothing to do with you, well, that's all right too. I'd rather have just me and Jesus. This one old man said one time, oh, uh, some, some of them come in there on him and he was sitting there and he's like, well, here you're in here all by yourself. He's like, no, I'm not. He said, it's just me and Jim. You and Jim, I just see you in here. No, it's just Jesus in me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And you know, he's all we need. That's it. I'd rather have just me and Jesus and 10 million against me instead of me being with the 10 million and Jesus myself. Hey, I want to be on the winning side. I want to be on Jesus' side. Amen. Amen. So we don't need to waver. 
We don't need to compromise to try to please somebody. We don't need to compromise to try to make somebody happy. We don't need to compromise to try to get a crowd in. Amen. Let us hold fast our profession without wavering, for he is faithful. He is faithful. God's going to see us all the way through. Did you know that several of you probably have already experienced it? I know I have. That God's faithful in answering prayer. God is faithful in answering prayer. Would you turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse number 3? Jeremiah chapter number 33 and verse number 3. Brother Dean said he had it marked in his Bible. I hope you've got it marked in yours. That's all right. It's good to mark in your Bible. It's a sin not to. Amen. You need to color in it. Amen. Highlight it. Highlight it. Circle this verse. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse number 3. Call unto me and I might answer you. Is that what he says? Is that what he says? Uh, it might say it in some of these books that come out today. Oh, but, this, the, but the word of God, this old King James. Look what it says now. Call unto me and I will answer thee. I tell you, I got goosebumps on me big as marbles. Hallelujah. He's faithful tonight. He's faithful. I said he's faithful. Hey, Amen. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I'm glad he's faithful. I'm glad when he hears his children cry. I'm glad when he knows when we shed a tear. I'm glad he knows when our hearts are broken. I'm glad he knows when we're disappointed. When we call on him and say, God, would you help me? God, would you touch me? God, would you give me strength? I'm glad, thank God, he gives us what we need. Hallelujah. Amen. God, it's God. I said it's God. He's faithful. He's faithful. God's faithful in answering prayer. Listen, church, look back in your life at all the prayers that you've sent up to the Lord and look how many times he's come through and he's answered them prayers and all the ones that you've sent up he hadn't answered yet, just hold on. Just hold on. Amen. God's faithful. He's faithful. He is faithful. The main text, verse number six, Psalm chapter 89 and verse six. For who in heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? Who? Nobody, nobody in heaven can be compared unto the Lord. No man on earth can be compared to the Lord. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. We need to honor the Lord. We need to reverence the Lord. I'm telling you, we're on holy ground tonight. This is a place where we come and worship the Lord. This is a place where we come and sing praises unto God, our Creator. This is not Comedy Central, as I said last night. It's not the Dayton Hall. It's not the matchmaking place. I tell you what, this is the house of a living God. And it's time that you and I, as a child of God, we reverence the house of God. Amen. Hey man, I tell you, he's holy. He's holy. He's holy. Oh, he's so holy. Who can be compared to him? The Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee? Or to thy faithfulness, 
round about thee. Listen, Mount Carmel. God has been faithful to you thus far. And God will be faithful to you all the way to the end. God will be faithful. God is faithful. Amen. Amen. He'll do his part if you do your part. God is faithful. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never been saved. And the Holy Ghost of God is a drawing you and the Holy Ghost of God is a pulling you and a wooing you. He's speaking to your heart right now. You know if he's talking to you. You know if he's drawing you. Right now is the time for you to be saved. Right now is the time for you to come and fall down on this old-fashioned altar and say, Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, would you save me? Lord, would you forgive me of my sin? I'm telling you, he'll forgive you, he'll save you because he's faithful. He's faithful. Did you know there's never been one person that has ever come to the Lord in a sincere heart that he ever turned away? Not one. No, not one. Are you sincere? Is the Holy Ghost drawing you tonight? Is every head's bowed right now? Every head's bowed, listen. Right now is the time for you to be saved tonight because Jesus is coming. He's coming for the church and you don't want to be left behind because we talked about Sunday night, we talked about the wrath of God. And the wrath of God's coming upon this earth And you need to miss the wrath of God. And the only way that you're going to miss it is by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son. If you've never been saved, how about it tonight? Would you give your heart to the Lord tonight? Would you come and call on His name tonight? You know what you got to do to go to hell? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing, and you'll go to hell. To be saved, you must call on the name of Jesus to be saved. How about it tonight? He's faithful. God is faithful. He's faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Church, God is faithful. And let me encourage you tonight. Mount Carmel, let me encourage you. God's going to see you all the way through. So you love one another. You comfort one another. You fellowship one with another. You pray one for another. You support one another. You pray for your pastor. You support your pastor. You lift your pastor up to the Lord and be the church that the gates of hell shall not prevail against. Oh, how about it tonight? How about it? Are you saved? Well, praise the Lord if you are, but if you're not, you better give your heart and life to Jesus before it's everlasting too late. Brother Dean, Would you stand tonight with eyes closed, please, just for a moment, and your hearts are praying. I want to read a verse of scripture while your hearts are praying in the same chapter that my brother just preached out of. Verse 39. 
Listen to me tonight, church. I'm just very brief tonight. Thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant. The servant of God has stood before you tonight. God the Lamb, God the Chosen One died for you. Thou hast made void the covenant of thy servant, and thou hast profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. You're breaking the heart of God. You're not only breaking the heart of your loved ones, but you're breaking the heart of God. Thou hast broken down all his hedges, and thou hast brought his strongholds to ruin. God has done all he's going to ever do to bring you to an altar of prayer. All that pass by the way spoil him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. Oh, dear God, don't be that way. The world today has nothing for you. The world today has nothing to offer you. The world today holds nothing but sorrow and heartaches. But God will offer you and give you eternal salvation. It's something you don't work out. It's something you don't buy. It's something you don't earn. God said it's through faith, but by grace of God, you are given it through the mercies of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. It is a total gift of God, and it's eternal salvation. You don't get saved, but one time when you get saved, you're saved for eternity. Oh, dear God, salvation is eternal salvation. Last verse in the last, he said, Blessed be the Lord forevermore, amen and amen. That's the way he ended the song. Glory to the name of God. If you've made a decision to stand where you're at and you won't or stand, sit where you're sitting, would you just say before I pray, would you lift your hand toward heaven and say, Preacher, I've got a special need in my heart tonight or I'm lost, whatever it might be. Would you just slip that hand up? No one looking but me and God tonight. There's not an eye open that I see. And just say, preacher, pray for me. I'm going to pray and we're going home. God bless. God bless. God bless. Hands going up. God bless. Hands going up. Is there others? God bless. Is there others? God bless. Is there others? Others, before I pray, I'm not going to ask you to come again. God bless, God bless. Is there others? I'm not going to ask you to come again. I won't lie to you. You've made your decision not to come. But I'm going to pray. Is there another? Before I pray. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, as I bow before this audience tonight, God, I thank you for the man of God that has stood and broke the bread of life, the Word of God. The man of God that has preached his heart out this week. Lord, he stood each night, Lord, and God he has preached to us the holy, truthful Word of God. Lord God, 
God, you are faithful. Lord God, if we will walk the walk, God, if we'll talk the talk, God, if we'll walk the spiritual walk of God, God, you're faithful to honor us if we'll honor you, the word of God. Your word is a heavenly word. Your word is the honorable word. This book is a book of love and a book, God. It's a road map to glory tonight. Oh God, tonight, Lord, I pray for ever precious soul, God, that sits from week to week. Lord, that's sitting here tonight, God. Lord, that lifted those hands toward heaven. Lord, I didn't ask them to raise them just to be raising them. But Lord, they're raising them toward heaven tonight, God, saying, oh God, help me. God, tonight I'm raising my hand toward heaven. Tonight, God, because I need help. Lord, I'm not raising them just for the preacher, but tonight, Lord, I'm raising them toward heaven tonight. God, I need help tonight. Lord, I'm reaching up toward heaven, God. God, you said heaven is where God your throne is. The earth is your footstool, Lord, that is where I live, God, upon your footstool. But tonight, Lord, I'm raising my hand toward heaven, God, toward the throne of God. Tonight, oh Lord, God Almighty, Lord, I'm reaching toward heaven. I'm reaching toward the throne of God tonight. Lord God, that I might get some help. Oh Lord, I'm in trouble. Oh, Lord, tonight, God, my heart's heavy. Oh, Lord, God, Lord, I'm surrounded, Lord, by trouble on every side. Oh, Lord, God, my load is heavy. Lord, God, it's hard to pull. God, it's hard, God, to make it in this old world. Lord, God, I'm having trouble from day to day. But, Lord, God, tonight, Lord, he talked about the word of God. Uh, and Lord it talked about uh, Lord God that you would never let us down uh, Lord you was able uh, Lord you were faithful uh, Lord God that you had always been there uh, you were an ever present help uh, in the time of trouble tonight uh, and God tonight uh, I'm raising my hand God uh, that, uh, that you might see my hand from glory tonight God uh, that you might see it Lord uh, and God remember me that I'm in trouble tonight uh, that Lord God uh, God I just need some help Lord would you just help me and Lord God help them to see that Lord all they gotta do is just bow on bended knee and God just ask for it. Lord, you said, God, we have not because we ask not. So, Lord, tonight, God, before, God, their eyes are closed and rest. God, may they just bend that knee and God just come to an altar of prayer. And God just say, Father, Lord God Almighty, have mercy on me. Tonight, God, I'm just asking you for some help. Lord God, I'm asking you, Jesus. God, I'm asking you. Lord, just, I'm asking you. Lord, to help me. Lord, I want you to take, help me take that yoke. I won't take that yoke. You said my yoke is easy and my burden's light. Lord Jesus, I want to be able to, I want to trust you as my Savior. Lord, I want to trust you as my Lord. I want to trust you as my God. God, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And Lord, I believe your blood will cover my sins. So Lord, tonight, God, I'm just going to trust you as my Savior. God, forgive me. Lord, you can, they can do it if they'll just trust you. Lord, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for every blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen.